So anyways, that's what chapter, that's chapter 5. And, and chapter 6 is about, it's a rough chapter. Um, it's about, I spend a lot of time reading about totalitarianism and, and about atrocity, like some brutal, many, many brutal things. Brutal beyond the capacity of imagination even. Um, and I read a lot about individual criminals and serial killers and those sorts of people too, trying to get to the bottom. One book I would really recommend is a book by Carl Panzram, which is a, an autobiography. Uh, Panzram is the name of the book. And he was a, he was a rough guy, man. His, what were his dying words to his executioner, to his hangman? He said, hurry up, you who's your bastard. I could kill ten men in the time that it takes you to hang me. That was his dying words, you know. He said, I wish the human race had one neck so that I could put my hands around it and squeeze. That was Karl Panzram, and not many people like that write autobiographies, but he did, and he told you why he was like that and why he thought that way, in case you want to find out, which I would recommend, by the way, because it's very useful to know such things. But, um, now I have to remember why I told you that Panzram story. <laughs> oh yeah, chapter 6 is about that, it's about, it's about Panzram, and it's about the Columbine kids, the kids who shot up the high school, because I read their diaries, you know, and, and I understood them too, which is even better than just reading them. And you know, you see these mass shootings all the time, and everyone does the same thing. Oh, how did that happen? Why did that happen? How can it be this way? It's like, well, why don't you read what they said about why they did it, and just assume that that's the reason. And if you go, if you go, <laughs> oh, well, the Columbine kids. <laughs> oh yeah, it was like, oh, they must have been bullied. Oh yes, because, you know, the natural response of anyone who's been bullied is to go arm yourself to the teeth to plot the destruction of the entire city, I think it was of Detroit, to line your entire high school avenue with bombs and then to go and shoot your classmates. That's what happens when you're bullied. It's like, no, that, that's not what happens when you're bullied. That's a stupid explanation. It's shallow beyond belief. And it, and it really emerges only because people don't want to contend with the real issue. And the Columbine kids, well, they were contending with the real issue, you know. They basically said quite forthrightly that in their own arrogant estimation, being itself was corrupt and unnecessary, and it would be best if it was eradicated in the most brutal possible way as fast as possible. And you get to places like that if you dwell on revenge for three or four years in your mom's basement. You know, you can go to very dark places, and so that's what chapter six is about. And, you know, Pan's Ram, who was very brutally treated when he was a kid, and the Columbine guys, who, you know, had their ups and downs, but nothing compared to Carl Paz Panzram, say, were, were judges of being, and decided that it was flawed, and that they were the ones to set it right. And so, it's a rough chapter. Um, but it's more than that, it's a meditation on resentment, because resentment is a key human motivation, and I would say, it's, un it's a great teacher to to listen to your resentment is one of the best things you can possibly do. You have to admit that it exists first, and then you have to admit to the fantasies that it's generating, and you have to admit to what you would regard as the way out of it. So that's all very difficult, because it means learning things about yourself that you probably don't want to learn. But resentment only means one of two things. It means either, like, shut the hell up, grow up, quit whining, and get on with it. That's one thing it means. Or someone is playing the tyrant to you, might even be you, and you have something to say and do that you should say and do to put it to a stop. And so maybe, and resentment can show you the pathway to doing that. Um, there's a meditation on resentment, and one of, the, one of the principles that I extracted from that is, like a resentful person wants other people to change. And if you're resentful, then your motivations aren't trustworthy. In fact, they're very, very dark. And that's why I went to the extreme with people like Panzram and the Columbine killers. Um, resentful people who want to change the world are not to be trusted. What should you do instead? How do you treat your own resentment? I would say, well, there's a, there's a great... I read this great line in a T.S. Eliot play called The Cocktail Party. And in it, this woman comes up to a psychiatrist. I think this is in this chapter. And she says, <clears throat> you know, I'm having a really rough time of it. I'm suffering badly. My life is not going well. And, and then she says, uh, I hope that there's something wrong with me. 
And the psychiatrist says, well, what, what the hell do you mean by that? And she says, well, here's how I look at it. There's either something wrong with the world, and I'm just in it, and that's how it is, and then, like, what am I going to do about that? Because it's the whole world. Or maybe I could be fortunate and there's something wrong with me that's causing all this unnecessary suffering. And if I, would, I could just set it right. I could learn and I could set it right. And so, well, I've been thinking about that for a very long time. And I think, well, if your life isn't going the way it is, you know, you can find someone else to blame, which is pretty convenient for you and also relatively easy. Or you could think, okay, I don't like life. I don't like the way my life is unfolding. Um, maybe I don't like life in general because it's tragic and, and tainted with evil. How do I know if my judgment is accurate? And the question is, well, have I really done everything I possibly could to set my life straight? Because maybe I shouldn't be judging it, its quality or the quality of life itself or being itself for that matter. If I haven't done everything I possibly could to set my life straight. Well, so there's a, there's a task. Solzhenitsyn, who I'm a, great, I'm a great admirer of Solzhenitsyn, his book, The Gulag Archipelago, was one of the things that brought down the Soviet Union. And he said that one man who stopped lying could bring down a tyranny. And, you know, he said that with some authority. And I, I think you could easily make the case that The Gulag Archipelago is the greatest book of the 20th century. I mean, there's other contenders, obviously. But he said when he was in the Gulag camps, you know, meditating on how the hell he got there. And he had a rough life, man. I mean, first of all, he was on the Russian front at the beginning of World War II, and then he was thrown in the gulag camps. And that was just the beginning of his adventures, man. He had a rough life. And he was in the camps, and he was thinking, what the hell? Like, how did I, what, how did I get here? What's going on? And he had Hitler and Stalin to blame, right? So if you, have, if you need someone to blame, man, Hitler and Stalin, that, that's great. But he... he that isn't what he did. He said he meditated for a while once he realized that he might have something to do with in some strange way with the way things turned out for him. And he said he went over his life with a fine-tooth comb in his memory. He thought, okay, where did I go wrong? But by my own judgment, when, 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 I, when there was a path in front of me, when did I take the path that I knew I shouldn't take? Because you all know that, right? You know. Sometimes you don't know if what you're doing is good or, or if it's bad. It's just ignorance. You just don't know. But sometimes you bloody well know, and you do the thing you know you shouldn't do anyways. That happens a lot. And it, why do you do that? Spite is part of it. Stupidity. There's all sorts of reasons, but you certainly know you do it. Solzhenitsyn thought, okay, well, what would happen if I took responsibility for where I am in this concentration camp, and then I went over my whole life and tried to figure out all the things I did that were wrong by my own estimation, that increased the probability that I would get here, and then what would happen if I tried to set them all right now in the present. And that's why he wrote the Gulag Archipelago. And one of the consequences of that, as I said, was it sped the dissolution of the Soviet Empire. So, hey, that's not bad, eh? Like, you make a real confession, you really repent, you, you do your penance, which is writing this book, and you completely change the geopolitical landscape of the world. It's like, and that, that's worth thinking about, because it's not only Solzhenitsyn who did that. Nelson Mandela did something quite similar. It's not so impossible. And so, the idea that what you should do if you're feeling resentful about the nature of being or suffering too much for your own life, let's say, is straighten the damn thing out. Like seriously, try it for a year even. Try it for a week. Try not doing the things you know you shouldn't do. Try not saying the things you know to be false. And just watch what happens. You might as well give it a shot, right? Because you say, well, I'm all in for a year. You know, I'm going to do things right. And then I'll just stand back and I'll kind of watch how things unfold. And maybe I'll reconsider at the end of that year. It's like, try it. Try it. I mean, I would say I've had thousands of letters now from people who are saying, hey, I tried that, you know, and hey, you know, <laughs> it worked. You know, I quit lying and everything quit. Do you ever see that Simpsons episode where Sideshow Bob keeps stepping on a rake over and over? <laughs> it's like his whole yard is littered with rakes, and all he does is walk around and step on, and then curse. Steps on a rake, it hits him in the face, and he curses. And then he steps on another rake, and it hit, you know what I mean. Um, stop doing that. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah.